so captivating. And then soon after that, uh, I started, there was a, a university class at the university, State University of Buffalo on meditation. And, <laughs> and I chanted Hare Krishna there when Rupanuga Prabhu was, was the person who was leading that class. And he, and I, and I wasn't so impressed with the philosophy at that particular point. And, but he said, you chant Hare Krishna. So I started chanting Hare Krishna. And then by the time the next class came around, I was thinking of myself as a devotee because the, the Maha Mantra was so powerful, it was clear to me. So in any case, then when Prabhupada came back from Los Angeles, came back from, the, from um, his trip to India after his heart attack, he came to, um, after going to um, Los Angeles and perhaps San Francisco, he w went to 26 Second Avenue and Rupanuga sent me, and this was in the middle of the winter, to see Prabhupada with another student. And, and we hitchhiked from State University of New York in Buffalo, upstate New York, to, to um, 26 Second Avenue to New York City and then we, we arrived there and took a train across town and we arrived just when Prabhupada was beginning his class. So we walked into a room that was full of, of souls who were listening to Prabhupada and, and my first had a few reactions because one was that I had been listening to the Happening album over and over and over again, just turning it over and turning it over and turning it over um, because I had I used to collect records, as so many of us did in those days, and, 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 and Rupanuga had said, if you like listening to records, you can listen to Hare Krishna records. So I said, how many are there? And he said, one. So <laughs> somehow or another, I was satisfied just turning it over and turning it over and turning it over and listening to Prabhupada's words. So by the time I saw Prabhupada, I was quite, I could understand his accent quite well. And my first reaction is he reminded me of my grandfather. He was so elderly and then, and then he was so powerful. I, I recognized that immediately. I don't remember anything specific from the lecture, but I remembered he was so powerful. I also remembered that um, I had this, I had this um, question in my mind before seeing Prabhupada because I had a conception of what a perfect person was like. So I was wondering whether he was going to stop at a red light. <laughs> it was a peculiar wonder, but w when there was no traffic, does he follow all the rules like that? And then because, <laughs> so I saw that Prabhupada immediately, um, there was a red light, he looked both ways and just walked across the street and immediately I understood that how practical Krishna consciousness was and how practical Prabhupada was. It was, it was practical, he was theoretically and philosophically and, and um, spiritually fixed, but always feet on the ground and practical. He also said at that time that, um, that he wanted to project a letter that, that um, someone had sent him. I don't remember the exact content of the letter, but he felt, felt it very significant. So he wanted to use, an, an, I guess, an opaque projector to project it on the wall during that same meeting with a few people and he said from now on, he told his servants that from now on we should always carry a projector with us. So I understood from that that Prabhupada was certainly willing to use technology in, in the service of preaching. So I heard Prabhupada say I, 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 in 26 Second Avenue, this was still in 1968, yes, so I heard him say that um, Two, two sort of handy phrases that really stuck in my mind that I found very practical. One is, if something is auspicious, do it immediately. And if something is inauspicious, put it off. So I use that all the time, still to this day, 50 years later. The other one, um, the other one was, something is better than nothing. So you, that one I forgot about. <laughs> now I'll start using it again. Something is better than nothing. It's, so, it's such, such common sense. It's so practical that if someone can do something, it's certainly better than him doing nothing. So it, it's good to see the good also. That's really, now that I think about it, it's very helpful in dealing with, with each other. 
we could see the good in the person's attempt and in, in, in Krishna consciousness, especially the eternal value in something that someone has done. Uh, that reminds me of that, that story from 26 Second Avenue. I wasn't present there, but um, when the, um, the derelict in Australia, if you call him a, a bum, it means something quite different, but a derelict walked in to 26 Second Avenue with some toilet paper and he said, here, this is for you. And, and then he was a, a dirty old fellow and reeked of alcohol and he walked out and Prabhupada said his spiritual life has begun. So something was certainly better than, better than nothing. I remember one time um, in Melbourne, he, all the devotees were sitting together and he was speaking to us in such a way that, that, that made us feel that, that we were all compassionate. We we're doing such compassionate work. And he made us feel that we were deeply compassionate inside. It. But at least for myself, I was thinking, I don't have a drop of compassion in me, really. Um, but he was, he was speaking to that part of you that was, that was the most sincere part of you because he wanted to, that part to grow. I, I saw that very clearly as a teacher and a, and a very expert teacher. But an expert teacher doesn't have, he has more than one methodology in his repertoire and his toolbox. So he, he knew when to, knew to use which, um, which you could say technique for